Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to be looking at a new product from Eoshin and it's called the Stack F4X I think that's how they're calling it. This is pretty interesting actually. This is a complete stack with everything without obviously the motors and the receiver but they provide you with everything even the HD recording. Now on paper this looks absolutely spectacular but in real world we don't know just yet. So it does have some weird things that you know I've never seen before on any kind of setup and that's what we're here to look at right now so this is just gonna be a quick overview of its specs and how its layout is and on the next episode we will be doing some noise testing on this guy and uh, on the third we'll do a real-world build with a flight to see how well it copes now I do have a pre-made quad already prepared which is hella noisy and that's where I'm planning on sticking this guy so let's go ahead and start with the camera here. The camera is kind of fat. It has like this aluminum shell. It seems pretty heavy, nice fat lens. Um, but you know, uh, it's recording 1080p 60 frames per second. I mean, uh, what more do you want in theory? So, but it is pretty heavy and probably this whole thing acts like some some type of uh, heat sink to dissipate heat. So yeah, that's gonna be, it's pretty cool. I think it even has a battery inside. It seems like it does, but we'll be taking this apart on the next episode when we do the hardcore noise testing. Now, this is the board that controls the camera. It's kind of like the run cam split going on here. Uh, however, this does not have wireless. So we do have two buttons, power and reset, and we do have the SD card expansion part here. Uh, however, this is not to pop off. This will just slide in and click into place, which is pretty good, but I do highly recommend you secure it with something because in a crash, that'll absolutely disappear. Um, this also has a microphone, which is pretty good. Um, I, I won't be using it, and these microphones tend to usually be very terrible. So, yeah. Uh, let's take a look here. There's really nothing to say about it just yet. We're, we're going to have to test it. Uh, I see that it takes... It's taking 5 volt. They're using nice silicone wires. The solder joints are very clean, so this comes prepared for you. So that's very good, I mean, if you're new. Uh, and this board proves to be very well, very good as well. So let's go ahead and remove some of these here. And as you can see, the yellow line is the video in that's going to the flight controller. Because this is kind of like, this is a custom flight controller by Eoshin, uh, which has a built-in VTX, which is pretty crazy actually. So let's just take a look at this. So this is the interesting part now. Now this is an F4 flight controller with a VTX built in. Nothing super crazy, we've seen this before. However, there's something a bit strange. There's no physical buttons to actually control the VTX here. And um, what you have to do is actually run CLI commands to choose the power. So it runs on 50 milliwatts and 200 milliwatts. And you also have to run CLI commands to choose the band and the channel. And I'll show you how to do that in a bit. But as you can see here, it's going by the IPEX port. And they do provide you with two uh, SMA and an RP SMA, depending on what you have. Now, back to changing the channel. It's pretty strange. It's pretty straightforward also. I mean, it's nothing complicated. What you have to do is basically you have to set this up in your Betaflight CLI. And as you can see here, we have two numbers, zero and a one to set the power option. So we say set VTX power to zero, which gives you 200 milliwatts of transmitting power. And if you wanted the 50, you would say set VTX power equals one, that'd be 50. I don't know why it's flipped, but I mean, that's, I guess that's their logic. And don't forget to save because that's very important. Now, if you wanted to change the channels, I mean, you know, you're gonna have to use the PC to actually change the channels on this board. So you would choose the band first, or you could choose the channel first as you like, but I believe you'd have to go with the band first. So for example, I usually fly on A2, so I would have to find the band. The band is one for A, which is Boscom A. So I would say set VTX band equals one, not A, one. So that's what, that would give us A, the band A. And if I, once I want, now we want to set up the channel, so I would say set VTX channel equals whatever number which I'll do two because I like to fly on a2 so that'll that'd be set for me and whatever you I mean whatever your band that you're flying on this is the same exact way just change the numbers here and you're good to go so um, that's one of the weird strangest things I've ever seen however I do like it that way because I don't have to worry about me pressing it by accident and uh, usually that's it I sit on a2 and I just wanted to stay on a2 forever so, I mean, but some people are different, and uh, for me, this would be just, uh, it doesn't bother me at all. Now, if we take a look here, so, 
Um, it's pretty, you know, the, the documentation on this board is actually very well. Um, they, they've documented almost everything, and you rarely get that nowadays. Uh, so let's just say here, Serial RX. Serial RX, is we know it's going to be, it's an SBUS port, and it's, for, it's on UR3. So this is on UR3. So that's very good to know. And if we flip here, we have ground UT6, which is, this is the transmitting, TX6. And this is UR6, which is RX6, UR6 receive. And if we go down to telemetry here, this is for smart port telemetry. And this is UR1. And on UR1 to enable it, I don't know if this comes already pre-enabled. They also give you a specific command to run, which is set TLM half duplex equals off and then save. So I, I'm going to have to test that and come back to you and show you exactly what, what do they mean by it. But it seems pretty straightforward. I don't know if they've already set that for you or not. But, you know, that we'll, we'll figure it out as time goes on. And obviously you do have SD card expansion. And, um, yeah. So let's take a look at the other side now. So, obviously it's an F4 processor. And we do have Betaflight OS, which is a very big plus. Um, however, another thing you need to take note of, this does not have the MPU 6000 gyro. This has the ICM 2068, which is the sensitive gyro. And I do highly recommend you do some sort of soft mounting if you have, if you're into issues. So that's something to take note of and just to be prepared for. So you'll be able to run high PID and gyro loops um, if everything is soft mounted correctly and your setup is good. If not, uh, you're just going to have some issues. But overall, you should be good to go. I hope so. And uh, we'll figure it out as time goes on here. Um, and I think that's going to include it for the flight controller here. It's pretty pretty interesting, I guess. I haven't seen any flight controller do these kinds of things. And I really do like the fact that I could change it uh, through in here. The uh, channels and the power just to keep it static. I really do love that. Now, the ESCs, now these are basically the Typhoon 35 amp ESCs. They're just like almost exact 100% clones. I mean, they probably, probably are. Um, however, you know, the Typhoons are noisy to be honest mine were hella noisy i've had two that were hella noisy and um yeah so i know these are going to be a bit noisy but hopefully i could be wrong uh maybe this has something different but as you can tell you know the capacitor array here is pretty tiny for such a massive rated uh, 2 to 6 s35 amp uh d shot 600 esc so these are pretty tiny actually for such a big big monster here so uh, I really can't say much about them just yet but we're gonna have to uh, wait and figure that out once we set it up and uh, go ahead and fly it and see how well it works and as well as do the bench testing of this whole setup here I'll be sticking it on the bench test and we'll be testing ESC and I will be recording HD as well as the live video feed from the goggles so we can see what's gonna happen now I mean, that's all I could really say about it right now, guys. I just want to do a quick overview, try to cut as much time as possible, and just to share my thoughts and show you how this whole setup is is set up here. And, um, yeah, well, that's going to conclude it for this video, guys. I really hope you guys enjoyed it, and uh, stay tuned. We'll be testing this guy very soon on the channel. And if you guys have any questions or any suggestions, feel free to let me know. And I uh, will see you next time. See you guys. Take care.